Well, good morning and welcome to St. George's Church in Nashville. Today is the Feast of the Transfiguration when Jesus went up the mountain and spoke with Moses and Elijah. So we're going to be thinking about that today. If you want to follow us in the Book of Common Prayer, you'll find our service on page 138, Noonday Prayers. Have a moment of silence. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. O God, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are fixed on you. For in returning on rest, we shall be saved. In quietness and trust, we shall be, uh, in quietness and trust shall be our strength. I'm going to read a passage about the transfiguration from Luke's Gospel, in chapter 9 of Luke's Gospel. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good that we're here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah not knowing what he said. As he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and told no one of these days anything of what they had seen. It's a fascinating story. Uh, and it's not difficult to put yourself into the position of Peter and James and John who went up the mountain with Jesus thinking that uh, I suppose they were going to have a nice little powwow together of some kind and ended up watching this most extraordinary experience when uh, Moses and Elijah came from the Old Testament to instruct him and guide him and prepare him for what was going to happen. And uh, there was this, this dazzling transfiguration plus a cloud which came and uh, overshadowed them. It's not surprising that... Uh, Peter was afraid. It's also, it, it, it add to that the fact that Peter was someone who knew his Bible. And he probably thought of the time when Moses was up Mount Sinai, which is to be read in the 33rd chapter of Exodus. And he was up the mountain and he wanted to see God's face and God said, no one sees my face and lives. So he was in a little cave and, as it were, God put his hand over the entrance of the cave and he just was able to see God's back. Did Peter think that as the cloud overshadowed them, as they saw what was happening, as they heard the voice of God that they were going to die? Hard to tell. But they had that in their minds, I'm sure, somewhere at the back there. 
And it's not surprising that they didn't tell anyone anything after that. I suspect they were trying to digest it or maybe wondering if, are we going to die yet or whatever it might be. The transfiguration was important because it was Jesus being prepared for what Jesus had come to do and that is to die upon the cross for us and to rise again. And his father loved him so much that he sent two of the key representatives of the Old Testament, Moses and Elijah, to come and give him instructions to be messengers to him about what was going to happen so that he could be preparing himself for all that lay ahead. Luke, writing in Greek, describes Jesus' departure as his exodus, his exodus, his going away, comparing it to that time when the people of Israel were released from slavery in Egypt and sent on their way to the Promised Land. So Jesus was coming to, repeat, to release the people of God from their sins and to prepare for them the way to all eternity. It's a great story, it's a great event, and we celebrate it today. Think about it and see how some of that might apply in your own life. Now let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And here is the colic, the church's prayer for today. O God, who on the mountain did reveal to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured in raiment white and glistening, mercifully grant that we, being delivered from the disquietude of this world, may by faith behold the King in his beauty, who with thee, O Father, and thee, O Holy Spirit, liveth and reigneth one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. If you have any fears, why don't you take this moment to offer them up to God and seek his peace. Now by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen.